When I'm feeling a little bored in game, there are two things that I love to do more than anything else. Run in circles around my FC house with no destination or purpose for hours on end, and help people clear in game fights in Party Finder. This video is about one of those things. The problem is that I have no sense of direction and I'm terribly indecisive, so now that we're in the throes of the end of expansion content lull, I devised a very simple yet effective way of guiding myself towards something that sounded like a fun idea at the time. I wanted to clear every ultimate in the game, right now, on every single available job, and I wanted to do some good while I worked towards that, so instead of joining farm parties or organising a group, I would get all of those clears done in Party Finder, helping people that were on the final push to their first time downs along the way. I've cleared all of the ultimates before, and before starting this I easily had over 20 clears of each, so I'd get to avoid what is probably the most time consuming step of having to actually learn the encounters themselves. Heck, I even world progged a handful of them, so I have what I'd consider to be a better than average understanding of how they work intrinsically. What I hadn't done though, was play most jobs or roles in the fights. As a healer main well and truly locked in jail, chances to try anything else had been few and far between. I also hadn't done most of these fights in Party Finder whatsoever, generally playing with my static or groups of friends, so the strats and culture you made that for me. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's for you. would be a bit of a learning experience for me. So the plan was to join late proc or clear attempt party finders for the ultimates, give those players an experienced, consistent player that could improve their chances, get them the clear, and then use show left or show right to celebrate their dub before moving right on to the next one. The end of an expansion is always a time where there's a massive uptick in people progging and clearing ultimates, so hopefully there'd be no shortage of people to help. I'm always looking for a chance to improve myself, so it would also be an opportunity to get to play, practice, and hopefully improve on jobs that I didn't invest too much time in, learn some new tricks, and get super comfy with the way that PF handles mechanics in general. And the method I'd use to keep myself accountable and make sure I'm on the right track? Tick boxes. And the next box I'm ticking is the box of having a sponsor for this week's video. With over five years of tactical PvE content to delve into, a huge selection of champions to collect, and massive integrated PvP elements, it is of course Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is currently celebrating their fifth anniversary alongside over 5 million monthly active players, with the Festival of Creation, an almost month long party with numerous events, tournaments and more. You can use my link in the description and you get bonuses worth over $100, including the epic champion Lady Atessa, 500,000 silver and many more items right from the start. Plus, after reaching level 25, you'll get a bunch more stuff as well. On top of that, after downloading via my link, use a festive promo Festival 5 to get the epic champion Tayril. Raid has got tons of exciting features, many of which have just been implemented in the last year, so even if you played in 2021, it's a completely different game now. Let's look back at some of the main features in the last six months. There's always new things being added to the game. There's a brand new rarity of champion that can use metamorph skills to transform between two forms in mythical champions, the live arena where you can show off your tactical prowess against other players, and on top of that, the Cursed City, a huge feature with over 100 floors to complete, battling multiple bosses at the same time. This is the most generous Raid Shadow Legends has ever been with gifts, so come find me under the name Rin Banana and you can join my clan. So remember to use the link in the description and try out Raid Shadow Legends yourself. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. So my self-imposed rules were as follows. Any clears that I already have do not count. We start from scratch, no free boxes. I can only use Party Finder. I did this live, so if stream viewers decide to hop in and help out, that's totally fine, but I will not invite them or forcibly bring them in. A clear doesn't count unless we see an achievement pop at the end. Aside from basic rotation or opener guides, I can't read guides on how to play or optimize the jobs in an encounter. I have to feely craft my own way to victory. There are currently five ultimates at 19 combat jobs, sorry buddy, which means I need a total of at minimum 95 clears, so it's fair to say that I've got quite a bit of work ahead of me. But that's not the toughest part, 
because I haven't played well over half of Final Fantasy XIV's jobs in years. I've been pretty busy this expansion, so I actually haven't gotten to play as much as I would have liked, and I am definitely sorely out of practice. So I wouldn't just be struggling with PF consistency and strats, I'd be fighting against how to even do my rotation on half the jobs as well. I also thought that opening up with the level 70 ultimates would be the easiest entry because they're super power creeped and outscaled, and it would give me an opportunity to practice some problem rolls without griefing my party due to failing tight DPS checks. But this meant that I had to contend with the greatest evil in FF14's endgame, level 70 Black Mage. Black Mage at 70 is some weird Twilight Zone amalgamation of half-finished ideas and unimplemented quality of life fixes. You don't have to spare, well I suppose you do, you get it as a permanent trait, but you can't press the button. Xenoglossy doesn't exist, so you have to hardcast flares on single target, there's no paradox and more. The only saving grace is you still have access to two stacks of triple cast, so at least you can run around and show the party your look of disdain that you aren't playing Gigachad level 70 summoner. I chose ultimate weapon ultimate as my first mark. Facing up against the primals, Garuda, Ifrit and Titan, one after another, brushing aside La Habrea before facing up against the greatest threat, Ultima Weapon itself. This is the kindest way I could ease myself in. Instead of giving myself a nice easy job choice however and playing something I was comfortable on first, I let my chat decide. They threw me on melee, the role that I'm least comfortable with, because of bloody course they did. So. With my monk jobstone equipped and fighting the urge to fixate on just how crunchy it looks, I hopped in the first party finder I saw and got to work. There were three deadly wipes here that I was anticipating running into and being the main causes of a less than stellar disband. Garuda and Ifrit should theoretically be pretty straightforward, but in phase 3 you go up against an altogether more menacing challenge, Titan. In Titan, in order to awaken the primal and allow you to progress to the next phase, there's a mechanic which locks three random players in jails. You need to make a daisy chain with those jails from the back of the arena all the way to the boss, so that the bomb boulder that spawns can explode them, one by one, freeing the prisoners and making Titan stand in the goopy poop that makes his third eye open. This takes pretty fast reactions and tight positioning and it's a really common place for the group to hit the mud. If you manage to make it past that, it's generally kind of smooth sailing all the way up until Annihilation, the second of Ultima's three headline mechanics, with solo mechanics for tanks and healers, which if failed, can easily and instantly wipe the raid. A lot of weight goes onto those roles to be able to do their job consistently, especially for the healer that has a searing wind debuff that can insta nuke the entire raid if they forget about it. This was where deadly wipe number two was expected to occur, and yep, there it is. Deadly wipe number three comes soon after, when you stumble through annihilation, somehow in one piece but dropping party members that didn't know the mechanics left, right and center, one of two very painful things can occur. Firstly is the homing laser, which is supposed to hit the tank which is second in aggro at the time as its primary target. But if aggro is messed up, it goes wild and as the chickens attempt to scatter, boom, dead. If that somehow doesn't happen, you get a suppression and one player is just kind of lost, causing a series of unfortunate events to take place. Three deadly wipes, and on my very first job we'd succumb to all three. On the plus side, shortly after all that we pushed through annihilation, magical clean suppression happened and we made it through to etheric boom. The heals went off, and the party surged to the north side of the room, grouping up for primal roulette. One, two, three. We made it. It went well. And just like that, Ultima fell. Monk was a job I'm fairly comfortable with, having played it in Anabasios a lot, so it was a pretty comfy opening, and it felt good to get a tick in the box and a win on the board. 18 to go. With one melee down, I decided that the next best thing I could do was try and get a clear on every roll, because at least then I was pretty comfortable with every possible responsibility, and I should, theoretically, be able to hop into any PF on any of the leftover jobs, and not fuck it up. In theory. 
After my victory on the easiest role to defeat Ultimaron, I decided to try out the hardest. Healer. Sage is an obvious pick, at level 70 it is borderline overpowered with its capability to shield whilst moving and caracol at no damage cost. And a smart, prepared shield healer in Ubu can take a lot of burden off the group when things go wrong in the final phase. Healer being my main role, I'd be in my element here. First pull, we surge towards Ultima. And as the non-tanks line up along the wall during transition, I have a good feeling. This is a solid moment to talk about one unexpected thing that can happen and become a very big problem. So you need Limit Break 3 twice in Ubu in order to clear. Once during the transition to Ultima, where you're going to need to burn all of your encounter specific buffs to chain a caster, healer, melee and tank limit break back to back, and another at the end of the third set piece mechanic, Suppression, where Ultima will cast Ultima No, I'm me. and you need to tank LB to survive. The issue with this is that because Ubu has been power crept so badly, if you have a clean run and most of the players in the party are outputting solid DPS, you literally just do not generate enough LB naturally to have them up in time. So to fix this, players often do some fun shenanigans. You can have them shield up and stand in usually instant kill hits to generate a little tick of the good stuff. You can have them avoid targeting mitigation on the bosses at all, especially in the first initial primals. Or you can have them hold DPS and wait, patiently. Because patience is definitely something that Party Finder excels at. You'll see us leaving the group on low HP during transition and using shields to defy death to forcibly generate a massive amount of LB right at the start as a preventative measure to avoid a painful splat later down the road. Not everybody does this in PF, but as time goes on more and more it's becoming standard affair. The tank swap happens, no deaths. Predation resolves, no deaths. We lose the ninja to a rock dropping on his head because he's too far in, but that's okay. We make it through to Annihilation, and it feels like everything that can go wrong does go wrong, all at once. The monk takes a plume to the face, getting a painful dot. The tank stands in the Ifrit dash, and then the other tank gets yeeted by a titan landslide. The orb goes in the group, chunking every player right before a heavy raid while damage comes out. The other healer is dealing with themselves, so I'm all alone. Luckily I'm on Sage, so I get to work. Shielding, topping, mitigating, we make it through the worst of Annihilation in one piece. The monk then runs into Searing Wind, and whilst I'm still working on resing that dead tank after having to focus on triage alone for so long, the homing laser chooses its victim, the summoner. We go into suppression with seven players alive and a dream, and thanks to some quick heals and some unplanned Adderskull usage, we stumble through to Etheric Boom, but step by step we forge ahead. Enrage closes in, and Ultima's HP hits zero. I worked hard this pull, but luckily it all came together in the end. So this is editing room Rinon, I actually kinda got curious, so I checked to see if somebody logged this run so I could check my healing, and they did. Damn. They certainly didn't make it easy for me, did they? I've heard that all good things come in threes, so with two jobs down that I'm super comfortable with, why not complete it on a third? Summoner. Summoner at level 70 is an absolute powerhouse. It does so much more damage than the other DPS that it isn't even funny, to the point where the more Summoner and their pet dogs you can include, the better, full stop. Summoner also plays differently at this stage, because not only are Garuda's stacks a DPS lost, but you also don't have access to a lot of GCDs, like Slipstream and Crimson Cyclone, so you often end up using a lot more Rune 3. That's right, Summoner is actually kind of a caster in this time locked state. Caster doesn't have too much to do in terms of special responsibilities. At the end of Garuda, they take a tether to keep the rest of the group's friction stacks intact. You go do some baits in Ifrit in order to awaken that boss, and at the end of Titan, you need to cast a limit break to fell the Magitek bits that spawn around the room, channeling their enrage. In Ultima itself, you do a couple of baits as well, and then for all intents and purposes, you're done. You just follow the group, and surely everything will work out just fine. After an hour or so of attempts, despite some incidents on Primal Alert, let's just say I'm glad I had Dance Partner, it was the correct decision, we dinged! 3 out of 19. Tanks next, so I picked up the axe and queued in. What I learnt from this experience 
is that honestly tanking Ubu is pretty fun on the whole. There's a handful of really interesting instances of boss movement and tank swapping and man, I really miss needing to move the boss. It's definitely something that I feel is missing in current day Savage because moving the boss well while sparing in mind melee positionals is pretty rewarding and I enjoy doing it and I want to need to do it more. I also had a little incident of my own on Titan, oopsie. I actually had a lot of fun here, to the point where I think I'd say that main tanking Uwu was the most engaging of the four I'd done so far. It was fun, you get to do some swaps, a little bit of boss positioning, you get to watch everyone scatter and do their jobs in suppression while you stand there with nothing to do whatsoever. This and the unending coil of Bahamut definitely have a special place in my heart when it comes to tanking because I just really enjoy moving the responsive bosses regularly. I think you can ask any tank main who does a lot of ultimate, but ultimate bosses just move that a little bit more responsively, and it's lovely. After making it through suppression, we tackled Primer Roulette once more, and with that, I had a clear on every roll. The next handful of attempts which took place on and off over the next weeks were pretty fun. I'm not going to break down all 19 clears in detail because we'll be here forever, so let's add a couple of tick boxes, shall we? Just like that, Dragoon, Scholar, Samurai, Red Mage, Dancer, and Astro went down without too many incidents. I'm pretty comfortable on all of these jobs, so there wasn't too much of a learning curve, especially on Dragoon, Scholar, and Red Mage. Samurai I enjoyed a lot though, because I got to help a regular chatter and friend prog and clear Uwu for the first time, so that one was definitely a bit more special to me. Samurai was also a job where, honestly, I still have a lot to work on. My third eye usage was pretty poor, and one day I definitely want to go back in and try and put on a better performance. Damn, maybe I'm the samurai maid in the making, just you wait. Although the clear came in fairly fast, this dancer run was very nearly doomed as well. We get near the end of Titan and Bish, Bash, Bosh. I end up the unwilling recipient of a tank buster to the face. But hey, on the plus side, we didn't need that guy and we went on to clear afterwards. At this point my chat was starting to develop a habit. We read a reddit post about a really salty guy that Clearful Ones even existed, and part of his vitriolic rant had the following shit post. So every time we managed to get a tick in the box and a clear for a first timer, everybody took to spamming the copy pasta as we lined up using our show left and show rights and giving the fresh ultimate legend the nice spot in the middle. Ninja was my next target. And I know a lot of you are thinking, yeah, this is another nice, easy one for 12 out of 19, should be no problem at all. Well, here's the thing. I have no idea how to play Ninja. For some reason, it's just one of those jobs I've never learned. I barely know the rotation, the opener, I just essentially mash buttons, and at level 70, you need to play it very differently to level 90, because you need to use Tenchi Jin to set up every second trick attack. Or is it Mug now? I don't remember. Just what I needed, more things to think about on the job that I don't know, more things that I can mess up. I was expecting this to be a clusterfuck. I went in, Monka steered my opener, and we insta-wiped on Garuda. It wasn't my fault, that's the only saving grace. Pull number two, and it went, well, we cleared. I thought we'd be here for a while. I was nervous about griefing, and yet it was a nice 20 minutes in and out. We move on. Bard Gunbreaker and Black Mage came next. For some reason, these three took forever. I joined party after party after party, and everything would fall apart for one reason after another. Wisp! <laughs> Wisp! Up until this point, I'd honestly been positively surprised at the relatively quick clear speed we'd had. And even if groups weren't particularly consistent, they were usually able to pull some magic together within an hour or so to close out the win. For these three jobs though, it probably took 4 plus parties of 2 plus hours each. Black Mage was about as bad as I expected, but I just played really safe and occasionally sacrificed a little bit of my DPS to make sure that I didn't cause death or wipes to greeting timings I wasn't sure of. The last thing I wanted was to be the reason a new guy didn't clear. I also learned that the number one tick to improving your black mage gameplay in Uwu 
take notes, potential casters, is to play Black Mage in the melee spot, because you have so much less movement that you need to do. You don't have to do any of the baits, most of your responsibilities are finished by Garuda, and then you just get to stand still and cast a lot of fire fall while laughing at the summoner who has to do all of your jobs for you. Over time, one by one, the clears came in. One thing I was really starting to notice at this point were the familiar faces. There was a red mage main who seemingly was always there. When a clear party went up, he would appear, ready to help, with his 500 odd uwu totems falling out of his pockets. I have a lot of respect for people that take time out of their day to help other people, and they don't feel the need to be yapping a bunch of toxicity in party chat, and it was lovely to see, over time, the same people popping in again and again to assist newcomers. Even when I was putting in time and attempts off stream, they were still there. It really reminded me that at its core, Party Finder can be a very positive, helpful and kind place, when you run into the right people. With 15 out of 19 ticks at this point, I was down to the final stretch. Reaper, Paladin, White Mage and Machinist remained. It was kind of weird that these were the final four. Reaper is the easiest melee by far at level 70, especially considering that thanks to its lack of buttons you can essentially play it on the Donkey Konga drums. Paladin was a little weird at 70, because of the fact that you don't get a Confitia combo, it forces minor changes to the way you handle the build up to your burst window, but that was a fairly easy piece of muscle memory to fix. Honestly having a tank job that can comfortably peel out of melee without damage loss felt like a blessing on mechanics like the sister blocks in Garuda. White Mage is the job that I'm the most experienced out of all of them in FF14, and it's definitely not the ideal healer of choice in Uwu thanks to the fact that, for some reason, you can't use a Flatus Rapture, making it feel like a level 50 job with extra cheese. Despite this, I was very confident and capable in my ability to keep a run safe and recover a lot of situations. Machinist was the ranged I was most comfortable with, I just hadn't joined a party on it yet because, I, I dunno actually, I just didn't bother. I had joined various parties at various points in the challenge on all three of the other leftovers, but with Machinist I had just never tried. With a 12 hour stream planned and on the horizon, I made it a goal to knock out all four in a single day. I think the boss's percentage is okay, somehow. Winnable. He ghosted my LB. Winnable. Have I just jinxed it? We'll see. Hey, is that another dub? That was a clear for two. One GCD. Well, that was another clear for two. <laughs> was that a one pull clear? Yeah, that was a one pull clear. It should be totally fine. Let me just hit the LB in instead. Hey. hey, this is another clear for two. So in the last couple of weeks we have done we have done uwu clears for people who haven't cleared before on every job. Decent. Decent. That was fun. So there we have it. I had finished the Weapons Refrain Ultimate on all 19 of Final Fantasy XIV's jobs and managed to help a bunch of people along the way. I had a lot of fun with my friends, my chat, 
and the helpers I'd met randomly on various runs. It was definitely something I'm happy I did. It felt good. But I knew the battle wasn't over yet. One down, four to go. What would my next target be? I guess we'll see soon enough. And remember to try out Raid Shadow Legends.